This is the new extruder that I got for the Creality Ender 3. And I also got the Capricorn Blue Bowden Tube that I'm going to put on it. Hopefully this ends up getting us better prints. Uh, but, you know, some of you guys like me to try things out before you end up buying them. And I respect that. I get it. And I love being the guinea pig for you and kind of letting you know how things work. Uh, I like this extruder because it's different than any other extruder that I've seen. And I've been having trouble printing TPU. Sorry about my nails. I know some of you guys get mad when I don't clean my nails out. But I just got done sanding black primer on a uh, on the giveaway helmet. And <laughs> so my fingers are all icky. But that's alright. Oh, my light went out because my battery is about to die. The reason why I like this is because of the way that it is. So this goes like that. But this is like super close to the hole there. And the other part sticks up right on the other side. So there's no room in between here for TPU to get out. At all. That's what I love about this. It also comes with this spring here. And it comes with another yellow spring right here. I'm going to have to look up, look this up and kind of see how this goes all together. Then I'm going to be making a video tomorrow showing you guys it put together. And I'm, I'm going to try some TPU first with this and this and kind of see how it goes. I think we should have a pretty dang good result because I've been having so much trouble with TPU lately. My Creality Ender 3 printed TPU pretty good right off the bat. Um, but specific types of TPU, like you can find the settings for it, but then it just struggles with it. And what happens with TPU a lot is mine gets clogged a lot. I mean, you have to really go in there and fine-tune the tuning. And I'm looking for something to make it just a tad easier. You, it starts coming out the top. And so I've had many, 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 many misprints of just wasted TPU because once that gets all tangled up in there and been all out of shape you can't you can't get it back to normal and you kind of just have to cut it and start all over i'm hoping that this is a fix for it the winson i will show you guys a link in the description uh, of the video that i make for this for not only this here <coughs> but a cheap capricorn uh bone extruder here so that's cheaper than usual all right there we are and it's done Capricorn Bowden tube, new extruder. Hopefully this is gonna print a whole lot better. Now remember this, with every new extruder that you put on, you may have to change the flow, your flow rate in your settings. Oh, I got some zip ties here, I'm gonna try to zip tie this, these wires up to the Capricorn here in one second. There we go. Now it's all nice looking. I don't know where there's a streak right here. That was weird. I got the zip ties on to make it look nice. Remember with when you get a new extruder that you may need to change the flow rate in your settings. So one of the first things that you're going to want to do is just print something. And I'm going to try to find Something small. We've got the TPU on. You can see how flimsy that is. The new extruder in place with the TPU in it. And try to get a good shot of that. I love it how it has the gears on the bottom here on both of them. And those gears run together in correlation, makes both of them turn. And film that goes through the little top part. I just like the whole design of this. Finally got the Capricorn. I wasn't going to get that for a long time. You know, just wait for this to kick in. And then uh, I'll show you guys it starting and then I'll just show you the end. Well, it's starting now. So I'm going to go ahead and tune this because <clears throat> I originally set this speed. I originally set this print. Uh, to be printed in regular but all you got to do is come in here and tune it and we're gonna 
We're going to see how it does on 60. And everything else seems fine. So. This is the first bit of TPU, so it's going to take a second for it to probably come out. turning. And there it is printing. So good so far. No room for that to come out if it does. Let's see how little room there is on the side. On that side, on the back, and just squeezes it right through those two, straight into that hole. This is just a great design. I don't think I'm ever going to have that problem again. When the filament comes out the top and starts getting all wound up, oh, there's still a little bit of TPU left in there. You can see the little bit of TPU that, because I, I put, I mean. I put a little bit of filament in there first to get it started. Ran it through the tube. There's still a little bit of that left in here. All right, well we're gonna let this print, and I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's done, the quality of it, and everything, and and we'll see how good she does. So these are just a couple examples that I did today. Uh, this one's not too bad. It's got a few little spots in it. Uh, that I got a, and these are all settings. That's all it is. It's settings in Cura, but it is printing just fine. And this right here, you can see the different levels on. I was trying different things while it was going, like slowing it down, speeding it up, redoing the flow. I think right here I put the flow at 110. You can see kind of just how messed up that got. Um, but at the very beginning, look at the very bottom, right there. Those regular settings. Uh, everything set down to like about 50% but everything else up here the flow was higher the printing was adjusted the heat was adjusted and stuff like that just to kind of mess around and you can see when I set the flow just how much extra was pushed on the inside so I set the flow way too high like on these parts but that's what I like to do is just do one that's kind of quick mess around with the settings a little bit and then this was the second one Still messed around with the settings a little bit down here at the bottom, uh, but for the most part it looks pretty good. A few little adjustments that need to be made in Cura, but that's that's it. And this thing will be printing TPU really good. And what happened was I got this extruder just for TPU because the filament was coming out the top end of the extruder. And the Creality Ender 3 printed TPU really good at first, and I've print a different type. There's different types of TPU. Really, really flexible TPU all the way to like way less flexible TPU. Every type of TPU has a different type of flex to it. And then what happens on top of that is TPU collects moisture and all sorts of different stuff. So you constantly have to adjust the, the settings and, and dry it out and do things like that. So the older the TPU gets, the harder it is to work with. And the Creality Ender 3 was printing TPU really good at first. But then it got to a point where this Solotech TPU is very, very, very flexible. Very flexible. I mean, probably the most flexible TPU I've ever had, except for, I would think that the old Amazon version of TPU is probably just a little bit more flexible than, than this. But those two are probably the most flexible TPU I've ever had. I started using this, and I printed this one over and over and over again, and every time same result it would get to about here and then the TPU would start coming out the top also on top of that every time I printed TPU for some reason it would always after like a print or two you know I'd get a perfect print and then the next print it would clog and then I'd have to struggle with it forever so it was a guessing game I burned through so much of this Solitech TPU just trying to get a print and it was mainly because of the Bowden tube which is now switched to the Capricorn and the extruder which the stuff would start coming out the top so, now all I have to do is mess around with the settings. The extruder doesn't let TPU out the top. There's just not enough room. The Bowden tube is so much smaller on the inside. It's a perfect size. 
So, I mean, it's pushing it through. Even if it started to clog, it would still push the TPU all the way through through the clog. And I think it's just a way more efficient extruder. So, I haven't seen any type of clogging or anything yet. Anything remotely close to clogging. I don't think it's possible with this extruder. I just don't. Be just because of the way that it's designed. Instead of one cog wheel turning the filament between the cog wheel and a regular wheel, instead of that system, this is two cog wheels that have teeth at the bottom, so both of them drive with the TPU running through the middle with a lot of tread and, tr and traction to pull that TPU. I mean, I was trying to hold the TPU back and it was pulling it from my hands like it, I mean, it's it's a great, great design. I, I really don't think that this thing can clog anymore. I really don't. And, I, and, and I'm going to put it to the test, and I'll let you guys know, so just leave a comment. I'm going to put this thing to the test. I'm going to I'm gonna put the flow way high. I'm going to turn the temperature up way too much, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to print, uh, doing everything to try to make a clog. I may even pull the Bowden tube up a little bit from the tip because uh, the tube's supposed to be right against the tip. If you pull it up a little bit, if there's a little bit of room between the Bowden tube and the tip, it's going to clog every time. So I'm going to, I'm probably going to pull that up. I'm going to do all three of those things and try to get a clog. But I don't think, I really don't, I don't believe this thing can clog. I really don't. And I'm debating on trying to figure out how to use this extruder for a direct drive so I don't even have to use a Bowden tube. I'll let you guys know. Just leave a comment. Any questions that you guys guys have, this is, it's a wonderful extruder. I'd, I'd suggest anybody that has a Creality, any printer that takes a Bowden tube, because I would say 99.9% .9 of brushless motors for 3D printers have the exact same screw holes, the exact same mount. So you can really, you can use any of them. Any extruder should cross over to any other extruder. Unless there's just some specialty thing. And if you get one in the wrong direction that's set up on the wrong side, you can do like I did for my Anacubic i3 Mega. It's a brushless motor. All you have to do is change the polarity. It's very simple. Just change two wires. Any two wires. You just change them around. It changes the polarity and changes the direction. That's what I had to do with the Anacubic. So if you do end up getting one that's left-handed and you need a right-handed one, all you got to do is change the polarity. But they should all work. And this one should work for every printer. So any printer that has that's you know an open Bowden tube extruder printer should take this and I would suggest this for anything not just the Creality Ender 3 I think I'm going to buy another one for my Anycubic i3 Mega because it's just such a better setup anyways hit that subscribe button hit that post notification so you're notified when I put out new videos also hit that thumbs up because that thumbs up definitely helps me it shares my videos in the algorithm it helps push it in the algorithm so other people have the opportunity to see it um, there could be some people out there struggling, trying to find the right extruder and stuff, and this could be the perfect video for them. So a thumbs up from you helps get this video to them. So your thumbs up could help someone else. And I appreciate every single one of you, every single one of you that subscribes, every single one of you that hits the no bell notification. Every 500 subscribers, we do a giveaway, and it's a whole lot of fun. And more and more and more subscribers is better. The faster we get to that giveaway, the faster we can do it. We'll see you guys later. I'm Bryce Michael R.C. Bye.